Hey guys, how's it going? It has been a beautiful, beautiful day out. It's been in like the 70s for almost a week now. We're supposed to be getting rain here any day now. We'll see if that actually happens. It's on my 10 day forecast, but that means absolutely nothing. So we'll see if it actually happens or not. But my plan for today is to take care of some of these seedlings over here and the coleus that I have. I have totally neglected a ton of stuff. I was actually just out here editing and eating a snack. <laughs> um, but I want to pot those seedlings up. Um, no, not pot them up. I want to transplant them into the ground. And then I also want to take care of some of the coleus that's right there. I want to propagate some of those and start training some of them into like, I want to do like a tree form. I want to do like a topiary. We'll see if it works out. <laughs> I've never done it before, but I saw a photo of it and it looked really cool. And so I wanna try it. This probably isn't the proper one to be doing that with. Um, these ones get absolutely massive, but uh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it anyways. So let me show you guys how I'm gonna go about that. Uh, I think I'm gonna move all of this stuff to the back and then uh, we'll take a closer look at everything. <laughs> okay, so these are my coleus right here. This is wasabi. I have a total of five of them. I'm gonna propagate today and I'm gonna do some pruning on them to turn two of them, not three of them. I'm turning two into a topiary and then I'm gonna plant three out into the landscape. So let me show you guys what I'm doing. I mean, basically I'm taking ones like this and I'm going to be pinching everything off. So like this piece right here, pinch this off, this becomes a new plant, pinch this off here, and this becomes a new plant. And then all the way up, I'm gonna just rip all of these off because I don't want it branching out at all. And even something as little as this right here is gonna become a new plant. So I'll pinch that off. All the way up. I don't want it branching out low. This looks like a Dr. Seuss thing. So I now have this coleus. I should probably come in with some type of stake to stake it up so it you know, straightens out a little bit. And then I'm gonna let this continue to grow until I get this to about a height that I want, which I want it to be about here. And so I'm gonna let it continue growing. And then what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll pinch it like I'm gonna do with this one right here. So this one already has some branches down below and I'm gonna leave the branches on this one because I wanna plant this into the landscape and I want this one to look nice and full. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I pinch the top of, of this and that's gonna encourage all of this side branching to happen. And I can do the same thing on these. I can come in and I can pinch these. I want these to get just a tad bit longer before I start pinching on them. Eh, they're pretty close. I'm gonna pinch them. So that's gonna encourage a whole bunch of branching to happen along the stem here and along this stem here. And then that'll give me a more full rounder plant. And I'm gonna do the same on this one. You can see actually this one where I pinched it right here. You can't see that. You can see right there. I pinched this one right here. And what I need to do is I need to come in, pop that off. I need to come in and pop that off. And honestly, I need to come in and pop that off. So what that's gonna do is everywhere that there's a little growth point, you can see them, you know, kind of all along this. That's going to encourage all of that branching. I'm gonna leave these two until they get a little bit longer and just so that way it has some foliage to be able to photosynthesize. I don't wanna cut all of it off quite yet. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this one into topiary and I'm gonna leave this one and just pinch the top off. That's gonna make this one flush out a ton of growth. And I don't know if you guys can see very well, but they're already rooting down below. These get bottom watered, they don't get top watered at all, so they can suck up as much as they want, which is really nice. It's kind of one of the reasons that I love using the bootstrap stuff is it's very versatile. You've got these like inserts, so I can pull everything out and then just water. I'm gonna do, this one is topiary. So this has to come off. And you know what's funny is I saw Bailey from the plant barn, she had cuttings and they were about this size. So I'm gonna try it with very little faith because I don't have a greenhouse. So then I have basically like a tree trunk that needs to be straightened out just a little bit. And then once these get to that desired height, which I want them, I mean, these two match pretty close, but I want them to be just a tad bit taller. And then I'll be able to, you know, pinch the top off and then let them stay nice and full. So now I gotta do something with all these cuttings because I would love a ton more of this wasabi coleus. I am gonna come in and I'm gonna pot, I'm gonna rip these bottom leaves off. So I've got a cutting about that size, not super big. And same thing for this. So I've never done cuttings on a coleus 
directly in the dirt. I've only ever done cuttings that were um, water cuttings. But after seeing Bailey do it, I think I can do it. Look at these tomatoes. They're huge. I'll show you guys in just a second the ones that are in the landscape. This is the same variety. They were started the exact same time. I planted some of them out early and I kept some of them inside where they grew nice and warm and had all the nutrients that I gave them. And this is how big they are. Remember this, because in a second, I'm gonna show you one that was planted in the landscape a long time ago and it hasn't done anything. That's why I start seeds indoors and I leave them inside as long as possible because even with cool days, things just don't grow as fast. So this is why we start things inside so much earlier. Let me stake these up really quickly. I just have a piece of bamboo that I'm gonna put in here. And these will probably end up needing bamboo the entire time that they're growing on. I am gonna leave it a little bit longer. And I'm just using some of this green floral tape thing, whatever it's called. Look at that. Super straight, super beautiful. That is perfect. One more. I'm really excited to try this. And the very next thing that we need to do now is pop our little coleus cuttings into the soil. And all we're gonna do for that is just create some little holes in here and take these cuttings. I think I need to go a little bit further down and place the cutting into the soil. That should take off and it shouldn't die on me. I'm gonna do a little extra precaution and I'm gonna cover this with a humidity dome and I'm gonna make sure that the soil stays nice and wet until these are fully rooted. Knowing my luck, if I didn't put the humidity dome on, these would just die. I am now fully addicted to Bootstrap Farmer. <laughs> I, I don't know how I could ever go back to using anything else. So I'm gonna be using the Bootstrap Farmer humidity dome. And you guys, those things are amazing because I can have seedlings that are this size still covered under the humidity dome. It's insane. Um, not that you want your seedlings that size under the humidity dome, but you know, things happen, okay? Okay, I have three more cuttings. I think I'm just gonna pop them into some of these other ones just for safety reasons. So some of these will have two cuttings and the ones that I have left are the really small ones. So that'll be a good experiment to see how well it actually even works. I always end up taking cuttings that are way too big. It's kind of my problem that I have. <laughs> so this will be a good experiment for me. And um, that way I can take cuttings very early. Like usually I'll take cuttings. You can see my last cutting that I took was literally this long. So they were massive, they were huge. It actually was deeper. It was about this long when I took the cutting like huge pieces of cutting of coleus, and you don't need to do that. <sighs> Whatever though. So I've got these going, and then I'm gonna keep these inside for just a little tiny bit longer. They are starting to struggle. I need to fertilize them. Um, I've fertilized them twice now, but I need to fertilize them one more time, but these are just gonna stay inside under the grow lights, and then these are gonna go under the humidity dome. What I am gonna do is kind of space them out. That way none of them are touching as they grow. There's good airflow around each and every one of them. And then I'm gonna fill this bottom tray up with water and then I can pull this out as need be. All of this is bootstrap, you guys. It is amazing. So these are gonna go back inside under the grow lights. And then we're gonna start dealing with this. So let me go show you guys the tomatoes that I have that I had already planted my experiment to see if they would take off and how well they would do. The first set that I had done died. They were under a glass dome and then we randomly had a day that hit like 72 degrees and I didn't take the glass dome off and they just fried. Um, but I went out like a day later and I planted them. But I killed them like three days <laughs> after I planted them. 
I killed them like three days after I planted them. And then so I planted a new set, um, but they're still so tiny. So I'm gonna get these planted. These are not hardened off. No, wait, these are hardened off. These have been sitting outside. Perfect, these are all hardened off. Um, so I'm gonna plant these outside and then I'm gonna plant the calendula. I heard that they're an aphid attractor, which seems true. Maybe they just come with aphids because this one right here already has aphids. I'm, I'm living the dream, you guys. So we're gonna spray these. And then I think I'm going to rip out the other tomatoes and plant these tomatoes because those ones are not growing and these ones are already massive. So here's the tomato I started in a container. Really good size, right? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> There's the one that I planted out. They have done nothing at all. I mean, they're so tiny. So I think I'm gonna just pull those out and plant these because these are three times the size and a lot happier. So I'm gonna plant those and rip those small ones out. Um, I'll just give them to the chickens. It's not the end of the world, really. And I don't need like seven of the exact same tomato variety. I only want one of each variety. This I believe is like the Bonnie's Best or something like that. I honestly don't even remember at this point, but this is the one I'm gonna grow along with two other tomato varieties. I just have to go get them, um, which I'm probably just gonna pick them up at like the plant barn or something like that. So we're just gonna plant this. If you don't know though, see all these hairs on the tomato? Every single one of these can turn into a root. So what we do is we wanna plant up to this first set of leaves. I'm gonna pop this one off and I'm gonna plant it this deep. And what that's gonna do is it's going to give this plant an extremely healthy start. So the roots will go from here all the way up to there and then it'll continue to flush out. So it's gonna give it a really strong plant from the beginning. I'm just gonna toss this in with the chickens, but also I'm gonna just pull this little broccoli I have. So this broccoli right here is um, one that was supposed to be heat tolerant and one that was supposed to create small buds like this, but this one's already gone to flower way too fast. Like it didn't even create a bud at all. Um, I guess you're supposed to be eating the stalks on this, but what am I gonna do with just one? <laughs> it's not enough. So I know someone that will love it, the girls. Did you hear me call your name? <laughs> Hello. Yep, loves broccoli. Do you love broccoli? Oh, you love broccoli. Oh, I should fill your food up too. So this is calendula and I've never grown calendula before. I saw it recently at the plant barn with Janie and it was okay. I wasn't obsessed with it, but I heard it's really great for a host plant attracting aphids and I deal with aphids really badly. So I'm hoping that these little guys will kind of like be the host plant for the aphids this year. I'm gonna plant one by my rose that I have. I'm gonna plant one or two in the vegetable garden and just kind of hope that that like takes care of some of the issue because I deal with it really, really bad. And I mean, I've got some, got some pretty good looking sized plants over here. And so I know that they're ready. This one, I don't know if I just said it, it's called Bronze Beauty. I think it's by Florette. Whatever. I'm going to get these planted. I've never grown it. I don't particularly care for the flowers, but if it's going to keep aphids away and like even just a little bit, I'll take it. And then my plan is once it gets fully infested with aphids, I'm going to just rip it out of the ground and throw it in the trash. That way I'm getting rid of a ton of the aphids. And then I'm also, I'm going to stay up on spraying this year and I'm going to look into beneficial insects because once we were down in Monrovia, that was amazing. And I would really like to get my hands on some beneficials um, not beneficial, some predatory insects. Ones that like are wasp, that are predatory wasps and they kill the aphids or uh, predatory mites that kill aphids. So I'm gonna look into that because I would really like to get my hands on some of those, but this will just be another extra step just to stay safe. This is the rose that I get hit the worst on. This is my pink iceberg climbing rose and it is a stunner in the garden, but she gets hit really hard. And so I'm gonna stay up on spraying. I'm gonna spray very early this year. I actually should probably spray now, but I haven't. 
Um, but I'm going to plant a calendula just right underneath her. Maybe that, that'll keep, you know, things at bay. We'll see what happens. I'm not seeing any signs of aphids or anything so far. But I want to stay up on it because I'm already seeing aphids in certain parts of the garden. Okay, so I was sitting here planting those and I looked over here and I noticed ant movement. And if I know anything about ants and I know anything about artichokes, I know that ants farm aphids and aphids like artichokes. And bam, aphids. So I'm going in with the Neem Max. I'm gonna spray this. I'm not dealing with this. It's too early. We're killing them now. So this is just neem oil in a concentrate. And we're just gonna douse this entire thing because I'm not gonna put up with this this year at all. And while I have it out, I might as well just spray the rose because if they're here, they're there. I can basically guarantee it. And this will also, I've seen it kill the ants. It doesn't kill them long-term but it does kill them on contact. So any ant that's here that comes in and touches this will be dead. So there we go, fully sprayed. And I, I love this one that's got the battery operated handle in. Then I don't have to pump anything. I kind of overspray too. I see them along that and we might as well. Look at all the mosquitoes flying out. Can you guys see all those? Awful creatures. Ants, aphids, mosquitoes. It's all terrible. I'm also gonna spray this rose here. I've got one more calendula that I'm gonna plant. I have like four more over there, but I've got one more that I'm gonna plant and I'm just gonna plant it at the corner of this onion bed. That way it's not like really in the way. And when I plant tomatoes in this bed, maybe any aphids will go to this instead of my tomatoes. We shall see. <laughs> I think it's time to harvest my lettuce. I see a slug on it, gross. Let's pull off all of these back leaves. Oh, there is so much slug damage. I don't think this one gets to go to me. Unless I wanted, nope. Look at even inside here. Oh, awful. That's so awful. I was so looking forward to this. This will just go to the chickens, they'll be very happy. That's so heartbreaking. <laughs> All right, you guys, that is gonna be it for this video. That was a whirlwind. <laughs> that was a lot of stuff done in a very short amount of time. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I got the calendula planted, I got coleus propagated. We'll see what happens with that. And I got, what else did I do? I cleaned up. I sprayed for aphids and then I cleaned up the other coleus that are going to be just my normal beautiful coleus. So I can't wait to get those planted out. I'm going to plant them out probably next week at some point. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one. I got to go clean up my mess. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.